Let me show you the probability, just in case we're thinking, well, maybe it was chance. That, that, I'm going to do, and it will be honest to every option. It is a possibility, not a high probability, but it is a possibility that everything just came from nothing, right? That is possible. However, Barrow and Tipler, who are physicists, in their um, work, the Anthropic Cosmological Principle, they list 10 steps, 10 steps in the course of human evolution, each of which is so improbable that before it would occur, the sun would have ceased to be a main sequence star and incinerated the earth. Is it possible that it happened? Sure, but not likely. In fact, they calculate the probability of the evolution of the human genome to be somewhere between four to the negative 180th power to the 110th power. I don't even know, there's not enough paper in the world to write that number out. Not, no pun, like that's literal, there's not enough paper. Somewhere between that number and this number, four to the negative 136 raised again to the 110th power. Those are the chances of it happening just on its own by accident. In fact, if it did happen, I don't care what worldview you, you espouse, it was a miracle. And I think if you're an atheist, that's probably gonna be a difficulty uh, with your worldview. Because no matter how you look at this, it's a miraculous that we're even here. Whether you attribute it to God or whether you attribute it to some kind of blind chance, those numbers are so staggering, it's a miracle either way. I just believe that there was a miracle worker. Robert Jastrow, who in the first line of his book lets us know that he is not a deist, a theist, a Christian, he is an agnostic at best, and he says, now we see how the astronomical evidence leads to a biblical view of the origin of the world. The details differ, but the essential elements in the astronomical and biblical accounts of Genesis are the same. The chain of events leading to man commence suddenly and sharply at a definite moment in time in a flash of light and energy. He goes on to say, astronomers now find they have painted themselves into a corner because they have proven by their own methods that the world began abruptly in an act of creation to which you could trace the seeds of every star, every planet, every living thing in the cosmos and on earth. And they have found that all this happened as a product of forces they cannot hope to discover. That there are what I or anyone would call supernatural forces at work is now, I think, a scientifically proven fact. Bro, you said it better than I could ever say it. Why don't you want to be a believer? Because it's not a head issue, it's a heart issue. Arthur Eddington, again, the beginning seems to present insuperable difficulties unless we agree to look on it as frankly supernatural, so why can't we agree to do that? Insuperable difficulties? So here's what we know. Whatever or whoever created the beginning was spaceless because it created space, timeless because it created time, immaterial because it created matter, powerful because it created out of nothing, intelligent because the creation event was precisely designed, and personal because it made a choice to convert, convert a state of nothingness into somethingness. Impersonal forces, gravity or whatever, they, de they can't make choices. And so we look at this list and then who does it sound like? See, if we're just looking at the evidence, I have yet to quote a scripture. Not that there's anything wrong with that. No, of course not. In fact, I don't even think, except for the one guy, I don't think I've quoted any Christians. Arthur, I'm um, sorry, Robert Jastrow again. For the scientist who has lived by his faith in the power of reason, the story ends like a bad dream. He has scaled the mountains of ignorance. He's about to conquer the highest peak. As he pulls himself over the final rock, he is greeted by a band of theologians who've been sitting there for centuries. We're just waiting for you to catch up, man. We told you. It's, like <laughs> it's possible to have meaningful knowledge without having exhaustive knowledge. It's possible to have meaningful knowledge without having exhaustive knowledge. Remember, there's two choices. Either something came from nothing or something came from someone. But if it's something from nothing, then we have to question our reasoning in the first place or our ability to reason. And reasoning is required in order to understand the scientific discoveries and perform scientific experiments. In essence, the only way science works at all is if God exists. 